pause. Now it is recording on the Zoom call. Okay, everybody go. push your red button. Three, okay. two, one. Okay. Boom. It is recording. Pushed. You see it the numbers pushed. move in? Make sure the numbers Ooh. are moving. Yes. Numbers are Big moving. time. Okay, Ooh. Tom, we're going to just do a quick intro and then, and this is for everybody, we're just going to do a quick intro and then we'll get right into it. Um, um, Tom, I'll do the intro of these guys. And once we introduce you guys, we'll get rocking right into talking about the Mitchells versus the machines. Uh, is it the Mitchells or do you just say Mitchells and the machines? It's the, the, right? The Mitchells. This is the, the Mitchells. Mitchells. Mm -hmm. Performance. So many many definite words, articles. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, a big fan of definite articles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tom, I'll do a little That's clap like, in, or we right. should all do a clap oh, in. So we all have to we, do that. Yeah, yeah, just for a single so pop. What we do is we cap, we clap on the silent four. So I say one, two, three, right? Okay, that, that wasn't it. Here we go. <laughs> so now we're gonna do it. One, two, three. Awesome, close enough. We're like a band. Close okay. Enough. All right, go, go ahead, Tony. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast. Oh, yeah. Animation, yeah, Tom, because that means that we are rocking and rolling with some animation discussion that is out of the, this world today. We're going to be talking about a new movie coming to Netflix. And as we drop this, folks, here on what, what day are we in in the future, April 30th, on April 30th, this movie is coming to Netflix today. That's right. I'm talking about The Mitchells versus The Machines. Mm. You've, you've heard a lot about it. I've been waiting for this one, Tony, back when it had a whole different title. What was that? Like, yeah, what was that? It was title? called Connected. Connected. Yeah, we're we're going to get into that. Let's introduce our, our guest tonight. We, we have the director of TM versus TM, Michael. <laughs> how, help me on your last name. R Rum Rihanna. Oh. Thank you. Rihanna. That was great. Michael I'm going to call you Rihanna. But yeah, no. beautiful. And then we have the film's producers here, the one, the only, actually the two, the only, Chris Miller and Phil Lord. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. So did I already go down the wrong road that you don't want me to go down, which is I called it connected? Is Do you want to no, talk about that? Because it got, there was a whole trailer. It got, it was starting to get released as connected. And I have a sub question to this one too, but can we say why that changed the time? Um, I think it was, I think it basically, I think when Netflix got it, they were like, hey, we like the old name. And then I was like, well, we, we, we like the old name. Um, or at least I, I did. I was, I was, I remember asking Chris and Phil when they changed it to Connected, I was like, should I? threatened to quit and they're like no 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 don't do that don't do that <laughs> <laughs> not over glad that. you didn't yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. it'll change Thank another you. four times right exactly. he's a passionate one there isn't he <laughs> i know Mike. absolutely what's funny is we spent three months designing that connected logo really? <laughs> oh really i was thinking about it the other day and uh the and it was a huge discussion when we came up with that title in conjunction with uh, the, our marketing department was like, finally, we can make, we can release this movie. Mm -hmm. We feel confident. Yeah. And then when um, uh, the generous people at Netflix came aboard, uh, they were like, there's only one note. We hate the title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the logo, by the uh, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the logo is really what sold us against it. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it had been called um, the Mitchells versus the Machines for, you know, the year prior. And that's what we had, uh, you know, been calling it yeah. uh, around the office. And so it was, it was hard to get used to calling it Connected. And then when they said, hey, let's change it back to the original title, we were like, oh, thank goodness. But it's not just the title. I mean, you guys had a date. It was going to come out in theaters, then mm -hmm. COVID. You guys have made this primarily through COVID, right? What was that journey like? Because it's been ups and downs, I would imagine. I mean, for me, at least, I was really happy about it just because it's like, we just wanted people to see the movie safely and as soon as possible mm. and as safely as possible and as many people as possible. Because I, it's hard to laugh when you're like worried about getting sick, you know, in a movie theater or whatever. <laughs> Um, like ah, a could. funny joke. Oh my god! But if you're oh, actually I'm sick, wait, I heard somebody cough right next to you. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Especially when it was like, remember there was that point when the scientists realized that 
laughing was one of the most dangerous things you could do. Yes. <laughs> other people. Spilling aerosols right. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, in a contained area like a movie theater. Especially. Exactly. Yeah. No, um, but dangerous. it was true. It was supposed to come out in theaters uh, last September. Right. Uh, and uh, then we put it on hold and then and then Netflix was really excited about it. They saw it and they they loved it so much. And it was just a great opportunity uh, to be able to get the movie out because I think while it is timeless in a lot of ways, I think it's extra relevant to, you know, what's going on in the world right now. And so it mm -hmm. feels like uh, sitting on the shelf for who knows how long didn't seem like a good plan. So it seemed uh, like this was a great way to get uh, a lot of people to see it uh, with, a, with a place that really was supporting it and believed in it. So. And that's the voice of Chris Miller for those that's that are right. listening and not seeing his face. Uh, Phil, why don't you say something just so we know what your uh, voice is. Hi, I'm, my name is Chris. Wait, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> hey, it. you oh, it. Phil. That's what you sound like to me, Chris. Oh, wow. I, I, don't, wow. I, I don't even know why Tom is qualifying this at all because we're I two know, we twins sound, that sound, we sound just identical. as nasally and people yeah. have somehow figured we're like, it out. Oh, uh, which one of us sounds the more nerdy and nasally? It's hard to tell. It's a real, it's a, <laughs> so it's just well, five I will say nerds this. on this uh, <laughs> out of, But out of the five, everybody knows Mike. Mike, you That's distinctive. Right. He's like, oh, ah! voice. you're like, you look like you're from the movie. You're so excited. So I, I from the movie. He does a voice in the movie. That's right. That's, That's right. Smart. Ooh, yeah. we'll get there in a second. Oh, wow. I just, I just want the audience <laughs> to know that yes, Tony and I have seen this movie. Uh, we got a screener from Netflix. Thank you, Netflix. I have really been excited about this movie, and I and I and there may be I some really spoilers. We should say that to the audience. Oh yeah, we, we may have this, some right? spoilers, but that's why we're releasing this podcast on yeah. the day. So you have no excuses. Go see the movie, then listen to the podcast, exactly. or get really enticed by what we have to say here, and go see the movie. Either <laughs> right. way, go see the yeah. movie. Either way, you're going to get excited. So, uh, Mike, let's talk about that since we opened that box. You do the voice of, is it the the, it's the little boy? Yeah, the little boy. Aaron. 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 Um, I do. Uh, I wasn't by choice. <laughs> it's just I mean, one I of those pitching it, the storyboards and they fall in love with your voice thing. Yeah, well, I think I just think I was I've sort of been thinking about it. And I think it might be because, you know, because we had amazing actors that are much funnier and more talented than me try it. Um, and, and for some reason, it was like m my voice was the one that was like sticking to the screen more um, and mm -hmm. sort of like people liked it and test screenings and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but I think, and I think it's just because I'm a younger brother and my siblings both left home when I was like seven and those residual uh, <laughs> feelings are still yeah. there. I was going to say, this is your story, right? <laughs> Take us back to, cause you, uh, from my understanding, you pitched the whole story. This is based on your family. This is you, this is, this is you, right? Yeah, except for the Roman apocalypse, which oh, uh, yeah. didn't yeah. quite happen. But everything you else that for COVID, one to one. COVID, you know, <laughs> that's <whatever>. fake. <laughs> um, we were thinking of having a, a a a card in the beginning that said based on a true story and a fake robot apocalypse, but it was too cute. <laughs> um but um but yeah, it was I basically um sort of I I Sony was Sony approached me at some point randomly. I'm just a guy, you know, I just a guy who worked on Gravity Falls. <laughs> and uh, and then they're like, do you have any movie ideas? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I have thousands. I had nothing. <laughs> I had just like a blank notebook behind me. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and so I, I was trying to come up with something and I was sort of trying to com combine the thing that I love the most as an adult, which is my crazy family. Um, and I think that when you're making something, it's better to draw from real sources because they're familiar and specific. You know, that's something that I really was sort of passionate about bringing to this movie is like a, a feeling of specificity, maybe yeah. to the point of uh, it's too specific and too insane. But um, mm -hmm. but uh, but I, 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 I was really excited about that. And then on the other side, when I was a kid, I was uh, obsessed with uh, killer robots. And as an adult, I'm interested in like technology, the fact that, uh, you know, robots and AI can do what humans can do. And if that is the case, what is it about humans? that is really unique and special. Um, so those, that's kind of like the stew that worked into the movie. I, yeah, it's so Great fun. Style. It's like natural, National Lapoon's you know, vacation. I feel like we're seeing this kind of family trip movie all over again, but with this crazy sci-fi you know, twist to it, which is really fun. 
We need I fun. love the, the insider jokes, uh, not insider, but the cultural jokes. Let's put it that way of, of technology, the and memes and everything, the yeah. memes and even your sort of, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg crossed with Steve jobs, kind of a character that you have in there. <laughs> what? No, that's uh, that's outrageous. <laughs> uh, no. I felt like you could have heard him more though. I felt like he needed a little pain in the story. I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's just <laughs> me. It was my Phil Lord is, is wearing his costume right now. I think it is true. <laughs> yeah. 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 An expensive <laughs> hoodie. Exactly. Um, so well, how did it come to Lord and Miller? How did this, because it sounds like it started with Mike. It did. Um, and then it, you guys must have got involved at some stage. And what Mike stage won the that? lottery getting yeah, you guys. Really? How did that happen? <laughs> right. With these guys yeah. as producers? We won the lottery getting Mike, I think oh, is more like it. I think that, so uh, you know, I think one of the, the, the main but, difference between Spider-Verse and this was that Spider-Verse was, you know, our idea was Phil's script and its origin, right? That's how it started. Sorry, was Spider Verse? No, uh, it was a different movie. It was a different movie <laughs> yeah. that we were involved. It's with. the comic book crap. But it was a, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, many people came together to make that thing uh, special. But it sort of originated with us. So we felt a, you know, you know, uh, we were there from the beginning. And this thing is Mike's family. It's Mike and Jeff's script. It is Mike's vision, and we happen to think that the his great and so it was our opportunity to help him uh, make the movie be the best it could be and so we saw a very very early animatic mm. um you know we're all scratch voices and most of them are mike's voice <laughs> uh, and uh and uh but we saw uh we saw in it what it could be and we saw how talented he was and how funny the thing was and how heartfelt and emotional it was and and so we were just excited to uh, jump aboard and help help him uh, help him make it. This I remember game. warning cool. somebody, maybe it was you, Mike. If if you bring us on, we're going to make it worse for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we'll make it better than it is right now. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, but just God. steal yourselves. <laughs> we did a podcast with the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse directors. Um, we couldn't get you guys involved, but they were saying the same thing. It's like, those guys came on and there was like a whole year where we were just, I mean, they were blaming you. It was just more yes, like, oh my gosh, there was a whole year where we just didn't know what the story was anymore. And we're trying to search through it. And we're just like throwing <laughs> out ideas. Is that kind of how it was for you guys? Do you like to, this is to Miller and Lord, do you guys like that process of just like throwing and stuff around like crazy just to find what sticks? <laughs> we, I wouldn't say we like it. But that is what we it. are. It's yeah. so crazy. I would it. say that we like to we like to stress test uh, everything, and we love to collaborate with people, and we love to sort of question and see if we can make the story better, every moment more interesting, everything more surprising, mm -hmm. things, the emotional moments more emotional, and the funny moments funnier, and uh, and so we we are not big on coasting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah no. and so luckily we found like a kindred Here's spirit mike. in mike who was so passionate to make this thing the best movie that's ever been made by humans and uh and machines to be honest <laughs> uh and uh and so he was uh excited to sort of make the movie be as as awesome as it could be and i think it was a really successful uh partnership all right, Mike, do, do you agree with these things? You, you seem to be nodding. I... These are lies. Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's like, I wanted horrible. my contract. They beat me. No, um, it was, it was I, I mean, it, I, I, I hate to do it, but it, like, it was like some sort of fairy tale scenario <laughs> where it's like, you know, because I, I, you know, I love Where there's this, this evil stepmother and she comes <laughs> in and ruins your life. <laughs> yeah. I've seen bad. that fairy tale. Right. Yeah, but, but for Mike, a first time director like yourself, I mean, um, was it a little bit like boot camp? Did you feel like you were being schooled by uh, these sergeants of funny? Yes. No, I mean, it, it was it was it was awesome in that regard. It was sort of like going to animation grad school mm. where your professors are teaching you and then they're also like jumping in and like you know, working on it with you, you know, working mm -hmm. on your project with you. And then they're also like paying a little bit of your tuition and, you know, <laughs> they're, they're bribing, you know, they're like, yeah. you know, 
pushing off the the dean you know like it, it was um it was it was really wonderful support in sort of all ways i sort of assumed they would just like put their name on it and go peace i'm out of here <laughs> but um, well, yeah I, and that and that happens a lot i mean we do know that in the animation but live action world maybe even worse i don't know uh a lot of the producers are just coming in and and just putting their name on it and going yeah okay i want to you know i'll get a little slice of that when it comes back around <laughs> um you guys don't do that, do you? I mean, uh, you like to explode things first, and then, but, but, but still, yeah, but, you, but you're there to help put it back together. But I mean, like Tony, <laughs> let me just go one step forward. Tony and I were from the Disney days, and but that's what the the development people did is they would come in and then they would blow it all up and ask these hard questions, but also say, I don't like that. Could that be a dog instead of a cat? And you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then they would walk away and not be a part of the the solution but that doesn't seem to be your mo but guys. in some ways you kind of wanted that too i guess it's... yeah in those cases yes <laughs> but, but i mean like, now with you guys yeah, yeah. i mean it, what is that like for you guys to dig dig in deep with it i don't know i aspire to be the person who just drops some bombs and leaves and then <laughs> magically gets better <laughs> one day but but chris won't one day you. yeah no i mean i think that ultimately all anytime that we were um you know trying pushing on the on the reels was it was never like a, I don't like that get that dog could it be a cat type of stuff it was mostly like is there a way for this to be clearer or 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 make me care more could we set this moment up earlier so this feels like a payoff that type of stuff and Mike and Jeff had a million ideas and a million ways to uh mm -hmm to do it and we had a we would have a great time in those edit rooms and we would like just spitball and come up with a bunch of stuff together and uh and it was it was the most fun part of the process one thing that you guys know is that animation is such an iterative process more so than live action you get multiple cracks uh at it at every at every scene uh and make ways to make it better and as it goes through the pipeline each department gets another chance to make things better and that's mm -hmm. what's why so many animated films end up being uh really special and stand the test of time in ways that yeah. uh, that other movies uh don't as frequently and I, um, I, that, that opens a can of worms and i and i feel i feel remiss that we didn't properly introduce um if you grew up on the other side of the world, maybe, or under a rock, really, or on the moon, then you then you probably do know who Chris Miller is and Phil Lord. They are the directors and or producers of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, 21 and 22 Jump Street, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs to the Lego movie. And we have talked about it already, but Tom and I super love Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. And then you guys have done a ton of TV too. So from that perspective that you guys are sitting on right now. Last Man on Earth, you I to say it, I, so. I love Last Man love on Earth. Oh, I was going to get to that. But anyway, um, from where you guys sit, you've done, you've done uh, live action, you did animation, you started animation from what I understand, done TV also. What, what keeps bringing you back to animation? Is there something that you guys love about it? Remember, this is an animation podcast. <laughs> well, it would be weird if we were like, ew, animation. <laughs> You're like, I actually don't like it, but they paid <laughs> a big fan. Well. Yeah. yeah. Just Remember that um, Miyazaki made us promise. That's right. <laughs> no way. What it, yeah, tell the that story. we would stay in animation and we wouldn't run away uh, to live action. Really? Is, re is that real? Yeah. That's real. What? When did that happen? Tell the whole story. Come on. We're at some fancy pants function. Uh, Oscars I think it's, maybe. Yeah, it's the yeah, it was the like governor's, a, a governor's awards. awards. Yes, it was the governor's oh, okay. awards. And he was there getting an award. And uh, and getting an award. We were yeah. there uh, in a failed attempt to get uh, people to recognize the Lego Movie as uh, a quality film. <laughs> and and uh, we were introduced, and we were uh, you know we I I don't remember any of this. I was told this because I blacked out because <laughs> uh, I get nervous meeting people I like oh, yeah. and um, but yeah he uh, he said very little <laughs> we were quickly ushered off but among the three sentences he said to us it was keep making animated films and so yeah wow. you have so to he knew, do it but then. he knew about you guys you I have mean, no choice now yeah. <laughs> he knew, he knew yeah, who he you were and that you'd done him. live action and all that yeah. and he was basically laying down the line 
yeah, he stay said, true to your roots. <laughs> exactly. So had he listen, seen Lego he was movie at that point? Had he seen it? I don't know if he had seen it yet or not. I think maybe he had. Did um, he say that he saw it? I, I hope so, remember. because that would really um, complete that story nicely. Well, he said that he saw it without comment. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your right. film. Oh, thank anyway, you. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty uh, amazing film. I had to like fan each other uh, for a half hour after. <laughs> that That's is cool. one of those dream come true. I was telling Tom the other day that I, I had a, I'm a huge Frank Darabont uh, fan. Oh, yeah. uh, Shawshank Redemption, one of my all time. We just movies. did a podcast. Right. Which I, I talked about Shawshank Redemption. And, uh, and right I told, out. I told the story that I met uh, Frank Darabont. He was with Guillermo del Toro. They oh, were wow. geeking out at Comic-Con, San Diego, Diego Comic-Con. Comic -Con. And just Amazing. checking out like artwork and talking about, oh, I love this, you know, Marvel, uh, you know, Spider-Man, John Buscema cover from 1970. I think I'll buy it for this $100,000 or whatever. Right. You know, they're just chatting around. Note. I got geeky, went up to him and had to talk to him and just gushed like a little girl about how I loved, uh, you know, Frank's work and Sh Shawshank. And they, when I, I had to tell them, but when I told them that I co-directed Disney's Mulan, thank you, Tom, I had to mention it. You had to drop um, it. Right. <laughs> um, he was My like, oh, I love movie. that. Oh, you sweetie. Oh, and that's, sure. that's kind of what he said too. I mean, almost yeah. verba verbatim is like, oh, I love that film. I watched it with my kids. I saw and, it uh, once. And you know, when it's, <laughs> but it's when it's somebody that you respect highly and they say something like that to you, it just, you can't believe it, right? I mean, Miyazaki. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, let me just say, Mulan holds up real good. It's true. Uh, uh, it is true. A, Phil and I were at the premiere the at the Hollywood Bowl uh, at the at the Mulan. I was there. Mirror. Wait, I was there yeah, too. I bet you were. I bet <laughs> yeah. you were. But you guys were was great. properly blown. You guys were young, like schoolboys or something. Yeah, at the wait. Time, why right? were you guys there? We were children. We were toddlers. They, we were, right brought the whole we worked at, I believe we worked at Disney at that time. Uh, we oh, were young okay. youngsters working at Disney, and and uh, and very excited about that. How did you break into like, the I, premiere? How Tony, did you I, I brought tickets? you your drink. You don't remember that? <laughs> <laughs> don't you think, Chris? I think if I'm not wrong, our accountant knew somehow knew, like his dad played golf with Dick Cook or something. Uh, <laughs> that's got, how we found. We were finagling. We really wanted to see it early because we were very excited about it, and it did not disappoint. Oh, those that's fireworks cool. and everything. Mike, oh, yeah, it could look like you had something to say about Mulan. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> I love Mulan. That's, okay. not what, that's good. That's All not right. what we did this podcast. Yeah, stop, <laughs> stop right there. Come on. Uh, okay, so tell me about doing the voice, because we touched on it, but uh, for the, the son, was that a challenge? Because, I mean, you don't sound like a little boy, I'm going to say uh. that. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it was, it, it, I would say that of, of the things in the movie, it was definitely the least challenging, mm -hmm. um, just because it was sort of, you know, I, I basically just because we, you know, I'm from TV and, and Chris and Phil are from TV or whatever, we like work really quickly and iteratively, you know, I, I'm sure it's in features too, but, um, but that's just sort of like, I'm like hardwired to like go faster. Um, so <laughs> I would just record every voice in the script in the editor's office, like, Mm -hmm. quickly and sleepily you know like ha, ha, hello i'm aaron uh, as that go okay next you know and then i would just do every line or whatever and then you know just it basically just was that scratch like the sleepy 4 a.m scratch oh. was like kind of what what made it in there and and i think it was just because it it sort of had this quality of of maybe mm -hmm. my residual uh, little brother um, vulnerability or something <laughs> um, and and so that was that was I would say the easiest part um, of speaking the... of residuals enjoy yours hey <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, now I, I have fan, a Tony. <laughs> I do have like a sub geek question to my original one which was the title change I remember in the trailer and this is true Tony and I went to CalArts I could have sworn that they name drop Cal Arts as the school she wanted to go to. It's it's a mm. very it's the most legally different. It's the most legally similar name we could do to Cal. Well, Arts. well right now, yeah, now it's called the Col California College of the Arts or something like that, right? Um, yeah, it's like it's a California Cal College of Film. Yes. Yeah, okay. Of film. But, but like That's it's right. it's pretty close. But was it was it never Cal Arts? Because I could have sworn the early it, trailer. It, 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 it wasn't but because they wouldn't let us <laughs> oh, okay i would have loved to have done it because they missed Cal Ar Ar it wasn't cal arts that said no but i guarantee that they would probably yeah. went, yes sir <laughs> thank you sir All it was that uh, me and um jeff Rowe, who is uh my co-director we met at cal arts 
and okay. and so we have a lot of affection for it um because that's sort of sure. where we sort of spent our 20s being like we can make animation movies different you know like standing on a table you know to no one um yeah. so it's like when we when we got the, i mean i think that's why the movie is so full of uh uh like it, it, it enthusiasm and excitement because sort of it, it, it feels like we're film students that hijacked a big budget animated movie and Chris and Phil were like you know the prison wardens that were like crooked and handed us the keys oh, it is Shawshank yeah. <laughs> like they're supposed Shawshank to be the producers yeah. and keep things in check but they're like go nuts that's um, so funny Tony and I met at CalArts too yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, a little bit before <laughs> wow. that too. Yeah. Pretty late, pretty late in your guys' lives. Yeah, that's the weird thing. So we're twins still too. It's very surprising. But I'm okay. glad you. I'm glad you named uh, Jeff because uh, I've been uh, fan stalking. I, that's what I love about this podcast. I get to meet people that I just stalk and love so much. But I was a fan of Jeff Rowe, your co-director, uh, and I don't think he knows this. Uh, since Cal Arts, his Cal Arts days, I went to uh, uh, the producer show. Uh -huh. and saw his brilliant little film that he did with the rock and all the rock stuff. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, I remember um, the rock one. Yeah. And I um, loved it. I loved the style of the look. I loved his quirkiness. And I think I contacted him somehow and tracked him down and told him how much I loved his work. Oh, that's cool. I mean, hey, Jeff is a great filmmaker. He's making the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie right now. So check it out. Get oh, down, Billy Graham. Cold. That's awesome. And uh, so Tony, Bad I time. want to segue into the art, the look of this film. I, we have, yeah. I don't want us to break out of this without going into this because man, what a beautiful looking movie and very different, right? So yeah. much like Spider-Verse, this one has some of that, that 2D to 3D kind of relationship where you're trying to mush the two together. Can you guys speak to that a little bit as far as, and I know, uh, I know of Lindsay uh, Olivares, uh, your uh, character and production designer. Yeah, uh, she's awesome. So yeah. shout out to her. Um, no, she, I mean, it, it was, it was really great. I mean, it really, she was the first person hired on the movie and mm. a lot of it really just came from her where it was like, we loved her drawings um, and her, and basically it's like that, that especially because the movie's about humanity we wanted the art to feel you, you to feel humanity in every frame. Mm -hmm. And, and especially Lindsay is really a celebrator of flaws and imperfections and that sort of thing. So basically we're trying to sort of figure out how we could get that into every piece of the movie, you know, so every frame looked like it was done by a person, uh, which was really hard. Um, and then, and then it was, and then it was also cool because we, you know, we talked about this idea to have it look like Katie was sort of drawing on the frame. And that's just another way to get sort of more humanity in it and also get to know Katie more as a character. Um, and, and then sort of the robot stuff came from like, okay, what is the opposite of this? And the, the really cool thing was both because of Spider-Verse coming along and because, uh, you know, Chris and Phil were there, they were able to help push it because we thought we were going to be thrown in movie jail, you know, if, if we made it look too different or something, we're like, mm -hmm. are, is it like, you know, we're like, all right, we want to do, you know, black eyes, no irises. And then is that cool? And then people are like, I don't know. Um, yeah. And then, and then sort of like we pushed it. And then, you know, it was cool to have Chris and Phil just be like, go, go further, keep going, you know. And, well, that, it, and that's what made me wonder, because there there seems to be a, like this is the the little brother of Spider-Verse to some degree. Was that <laughs> is that true, Phil and, and Chris? Did you guys come into this going, well, you know, we just did this thing and, and here's a technique that worked. How about we try it here? I, I certainly remember talking with Mike and his team and saying, you're you're not supposed to make this convenient for image works your job is to make it super inconvenient <laughs> and they're really good and they built all these awesome tools mm -hmm. for the last movie and we turned them all into punk rockers who disobey their superiors now nice. and <laughs> wow they're really excited to try to solve these problems so you, mm -hmm. so you shouldn't shave the edges of what you're doing and uh that was and we got about three words into that speech and they were out the door making 
the movie crazy again. <laughs> or going to the beach. beach. Um, and I think that, that because people, um, because the studio had gotten such good feedback from uh, pushing the artistic style in Spider-Verse, they were way more open to uh, not just retreating back to the safety of things that all look like each other. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we, they were uh, in, uh, to Sony's credit, very supportive of Mike uh, making this movie look like its own thing and uh, not like a standard movie. And it has such a handmade feel to it. Uh, and it, and they did use a lot of the the tools that were developed for Spider Verse, but then they adapted them and brought them into places they hadn't uh, been done before. And you know, part of it is the the crew that Mike chose. And, and, and the willingness of the studio to embrace some new voices. Lindsay was, you know, not chosen because she was a really experienced feature production designer. <laughs> you know, I remember Mike saying yeah. like, we really like this person's work and look at her cool Instagram animations. <laughs> could we, who could we hire that could make the movie look and feel like this? And I remember we all sat around and said, well, why don't what we hire I'm... the person who made this? <laughs> yeah. What about her? <laughs> yeah, exactly. we, right. We have a lot of experienced people at this studio who can really, you know, support give, that person. Yeah. yeah. Support that person and try to help her make the movie look like this. So it was it. You know, I applaud Imageworks and Spa for um, for, you know, taking that chance. Mm -hmm. It really paid off. It's 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 super paid off. She's the she's like, of like she just made every every art review was like a sauna or like a spa compared to like how hard everything else was. It's like you'd go in the art review and it was like Christmas morning. Like, hey, is it? Would you mind if the movie looked amazing? And I was like, great. You know, <laughs> <laughs> is that you know, okay? Cool. Can we just pass amazing next to you? Here, let's see this. <laughs> yeah. But I gotta say, I think uh, I, you know, I want to celebrate that too because it feels like you guys have just really celebrated the fact that, um, you know, Mike and Jeff and and your production designer, all these people were first timers that had never really taken on these opportunities before. But you didn't hold them up to some, you know, oh, you gotta be ten years in the industry or some kind of tradition of of what it takes to do that. You just said these people are doing great work. We see great mm -hmm. talent in them. Let's just come beside them, support them and get that craziness, that freshness up there. And I really felt like that's, that's what I got from the movie. I, it feels, um, it feels so different and new and new and fun because I think it has that, I don't know, it has that creative excitement. I feel that when I watch it, I, I feel like that's teach, a, yeah, go ahead. You can't, you can't teach inspiration. Mm, yeah. Right. 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 You, you know, and, and these guys had it when you watched the movie that they were working on when we came on board, that was really palpable. That like, we're, let's just get away with as much cool stuff as we can. Yeah, It was seeping out of the frame. Right. And In fact, there's we so like, much. I, I, I get, I, I've watched it, I've had to watch it a couple times because one of the things that I applaud you guys for, because Tom and I are huge 2D animation fans. I know you guys started that way. You love 2D animation. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we we see it in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that influence. But oh my gosh, the combo of the CG and then you throw in all these fun little, um, I guess they're Katie's doodles. The main character, or, or mm -hmm. sorry, not the main main character, but yeah, she is the main character. Katie, the main character, we'll mm -hmm. cut that and change that. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. We, or we not. Will. Or like, like Katie. Leave this as texture. There you go. <laughs> Katie, the main character. Anyway, she she does so many of these wonderful little doodles throughout there. You get you get her energy and a vibe of who she is and how crazy and out of the just out of left field she is as, as a special character. But also for the audience, oh my gosh, there's so many like quick little cuts and little things. And there's like, yeah. did that did that dog have three human arms? I, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> It was so fun though. And, and did it, did Lindsay do that style too? Cause I keep looking at that. I'm yes. like, how do you, how do you tap into that very childlike drawing ability when you can actually draw? It's yeah. I mean, it's so hard is one of the hardest things to do, right? It's like it is. to draw uh, naively. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
I was thinking maybe Chris and you guys, maybe you guys did those. <laughs> no, it's Lindsay and her her team. There's a, a handful of artists uh, with Lindsay that were sort of responsible yeah. for what we were calling Katie Vision, which is sort of how Katie sees the world and mm. her little mixed media films. I mean, if you go into Lindsay's office, it was full of like sock puppets and like yeah. felt cutouts of like things that were used for the oh, Mike is gonna screen. grab one. Uh oh, looks like oh here we gonna go. grab one. I know that this is an audio podcast, well, but yeah, she, you guys can describe it. But yeah. she she just like has hundreds of oh. these like oh Mike, Mike is holding up some uh, looks like flannel. That, this is made puppets. out of um, cups from the uh, cafeteria. There's a pterodactyl. Oh my wow. gosh, that's insane. What yeah. was her idea? She all this stuff on so the she weekend. is crazy. And no one, no one ever, she never asked for permission, which is one of the things I love about her. She just did it. She, just absolute, she is on, an absolute rock star. Yeah. She wanted that job bad. She was, yeah, working. yeah, she no, did. She, she earned it. She earned she it. She did and she earned it. But, it, yeah. but now my, from a production standpoint, um, did the Katie Vision stuff, did that drive production crazy? Or were there, <laughs> were there, were there other producers that are not the, the Lord Miller types that are going, do whatever you want, break everything. And were there the the the, the, the real logical we'll figure producers out a pipeline that yeah. were like I mean it was very do we need Katie Vision all over. What about this chasing? Do we really need clouds and rainbows through this whole thing? You know, was yeah. it, was it was there very that? convenient that our loudest and most passionate producers had made a bunch of hit movies. <laughs> oh, so it was these guys. Okay, so it was well, it was nice that everyone was like, I mean, I get Kristen. I mean, I always felt like my one of my roles in the movie was like. Um, you know the scene in uh, uh, Blazing Saddles where Cleavon Little holds a pistol to himself? I would always be like, look, Chris and Phil are forcing me to do it. I, 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 I can't stop them. They're, they're, they've gone mad. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, every time you talk, you're screaming. <laughs> you are just going to be so in everybody's ears. No, this is great because when you have five people, you have to scream to get attention, to get <laughs> the mic right. time. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead, oh my go ahead God. Tom. You that go might ahead, have been a note in the movie for yeah. uh, certain people. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah that would probably be the main studio note why is every character screaming <laughs> oh that's because just a scratch. scratch voice oh. by my grand <laughs> because mike grew up with disney channel that's why <laughs> that's that's true. True. Oh, hey guys so the, I, I just want to have a comment on this the eyes the eyes on your characters mm -hmm. look fantastic they look like they're hand drawn okay but I got to talk about the pupils, them. right? Like the actual the pupil. pupils. They're yeah. not complete circles. They're wonky, right? Yeah. yeah. They're kind of like squarish circles. Yeah. Okay. So just to me, that when you're talking about a 3D model is brilliant. So thank you for that. No perfect pupils. Uh, but like, like, was that just a natural when, when you were talking about these characters? Yeah, I think I think it all came from just trying to. Now I'm like, like I'm trying to like calm down. Uh, but I, I think <laughs> it all. Just, I think it all just came from um, having characters that were, you know, just trying to mimic 2D as much as possible and trying to mimic like Lindsay's drawings as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so it was just like that seemed natural, and also just like as a bias or something, everyone on the team liked that. You know, we would that that's like one of the things that we would talk about at Keller. It's like, why do all the characters' eyes look the same? You know, um, yeah. so um, so we we're we we're excited to do that. Cause and it's funny because in 3D you do need to have if you look really close, there's a little reflection and there's like a hint of an iris. Cause if it looks if it's totally matte black, it looks bad. It looks bad. Yeah. So you have to balance it a little bit, but ideally it'll the the feel of it will be the same as a drawing. Mm. There's so many, yeah. I got to ask this for the fans out there. Cause you know, there's geeky fans that are going to watch this and go, I thought I saw this. And I thought I saw that, you know, so many little Easter eggs and things like that. Um, one in, in particular that I feel like I caught on to, but I could be totally off dog cop Katie's uh, movie series and stuff that she developed mm. any similarities or, or callbacks to Brooklyn nine, nine. I know you guys were involved <laughs> with that. Oh. I can't say that's true. I think it was just like, what's the worst movie you could put your dog into? Yeah. <laughs> what were the other? But Mike, there were a lot of we landed on so dog many. pop, but but it was only it was really a, a process of natural selection that got yeah. us there, right? What yeah. were the other things on the menu? We had we had dial B for burger. We mm -hmm. had um we had and then we have a bunch of like 
like criterion collection type movies that <laughs> Katie has inserted her dog into like okay Monchi fear eats the soul or whatever <laughs> like um so there's there's like all kinds of you know goofy film references and stuff just because again it was sort of like a bunch of film students who were like hey there's a freeze frame let's put three thousand jokes into it right um, <laughs> Well, I, and I got to jump on this because I don't know if you've heard throughout this podcast, I have a snoring pug in the background. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I didn't hear that. That's what that I thought, was. I thought that was Mike. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was my lunch. <laughs> I've been awake the whole time. I'm on sugar cookies all day long. So, but yeah, I have Mushu uh, is a pug and oh, Macy, cute. a little puppy. They're both in here snoring. And as we all know, there's a major, uh, Muchi, is that his name? Muchi, right? Manchi. Manchi, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, pug in this and then you actually had a friend of mine i know the real doug the pug who did you know you I oh did. my gosh starstruck i know uh, i well i live in nashville he's and actually, pet him yeah i've pet him they've he's licked my other. house and has, has met my pug so oh wow that's yeah. awesome we still haven't met him that was one of my i was really? like that was one of the the ideas beyond casting him i was like i gotta meet this dog <laughs> but we still haven't met him <laughs> yet awesome you, you may want to cut uh, this, but Tom actually was developing a, a show, a series, an animated series with Doug the Pug. Amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 Amazing. I mean, yeah. well, you know what a good voice performer he is. <laughs> yeah. On command. The, the panting is just natural in a way that. <laughs> but I mean, this has never been this. We've had social influencers that have done voices and things like that, but never a pet influencer. That's what Doug <laughs> is. How, how did that come about? I'm just curious. I mean, obviously, there's a, a nice marketing angle to this, of course, but it was interesting. It made for that. I mean, you already have the quirkiness of this film to have sort of this have a dog do his own a dog's <laughs> voice was kind of amazing uh, who, who came up with that idea i can't remember whose idea it was but i know that like one of the you know the movie is a lot uh talks a lot about you know social media and its positives and negatives and uh and so that was you know part of the reason for casting you know chrissy teigen and john legend as the neighbors yeah. I love that. Uh, and then the sort of idea was like, oh, it would be fun to like get some more people who are in that world to be part of this movie. And and I don't remember whose idea it was, but, uh, <laughs> but when the idea came up, it seemed like uh, the perfect fit for the themes of the movie. And also just because it was kind of a hilarious idea. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's like, it's like my, all, all, like all my nephews like Doug the Pug and it was, it seemed like good to sort of whenever we had an opportunity to cast someone, if it was just somebody that we loved. So it would just feel like, you know, because sometimes in animated movies, especially, it's like some of those choices feel really cynical, mm -hmm. where it's like, ha now we have this person. But we wanted to try to pick all people that we like really like had fondness for us, And hopefully that would like come through because we, we love Doug. Well, we, <laughs> we started... We started with Doug, but we do need to talk a little bit more about some of the other voices, Sony. Yeah. Tell us about, uh, you know, was was uh, uh, Danny McBride, was he the, uh, by the way, I love Danny and Maya together. Maya Rudolph and Danny McBride. I, it's not apparent. Yeah, and the design really looked like Maya too, I felt like. I don't know, she it really did. clicked with it. Yeah, She really acted like her for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but with these- Two like, geniuses for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. was this um, like a dream chance to work with them? Yeah, no question. Um, they're all, you know, so many of the um, voices are writer performers. Yeah. You know, it really helps <laughs> when you're sitting there going like, oh man, I wish this scene was funnier. Why don't we hire one of the funniest people in the world to come in and just like and to lay some stuff down. And Doug yeah. is like, yes, I think I should be. Yes. 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 He was like, uh, right. try this one. Like it pan harder. <laughs> um no it's true it's it's really great one of the many iterative processes is that you can um uh, you know you can let these people be the geniuses that they are and they give you extra free moments of sincerity and things that don't feel written or canned and also extra funny jokes and performances that you weren't expecting along the way mm. yeah now I, they I, they just offer that up like in the in the room. Hey, what I got an idea. Let me try this. Or are they going? Uh, you know, if you guys pay me an extra two thousand dollars for the session, <laughs> I could help out with this line a little bit. I, I did sketch some things down, but I don't want to show it to you until you write the check. 
no they were they were they were very i think it's i i feel like because it's such a solitary experience like being in front of you know uh, just a you know with that stand and the script and stuff i think they sort of all had a lot of fun like doing that stuff because it made it more sort of like a, a engaging and alive for them yeah so it's not just like going in and going in and reading pages off the script like i i feel like all all of those actors like really came alive when they were improvising and and not that they weren't before <laughs> but you know um but and that and that was like a cool thing also about sort of like that i learned from chris and phil where it's like they would come in you know, because I was, I'm very like, you know, had this, I'm like, okay, we got to get every line, uh, gee, you know, sweat pouring down my face. And they're like, let's just, let's spend an hour on this scene and see what we can find. And, and like, in my head, I'm like, that's, that, that's too long. The scene's short. But we found out that we would get a ton of stuff from the actor that, you know, maybe we'd use in a different scene. Mm. And maybe the, the, the improv that we came up with in that moment is something that informs their character going forward. And it like, it all ended up being really valuable. And it also really engages the actors. So it's it's not like a job where they're just sitting there and, you know, performing and collecting a paycheck. They're really engaging creatively. And when you do that, you know, we found all across the board from the painters to the editors to the, you know, if you say to people, it's okay, give us what you got. Yeah. They tend to light up and give you a lot of great stuff. And, and, and that's, that, that is a lot of why the movie that I'm proud of the movie is like, I look at the movie and I'm like, Abby Jacobson came up with that line. And then our head of story Guillermo made that funny pose. And then, you know, this person did this. And it's so many people bringing, bringing yeah. what they have to it. And and if you let that, if you let them, they, they, people, people what will. Cool, and, and I mean, I, I mean, when cool you watch this movie, I love that. it's so obvious. Everybody involved is having a time of their lives. And I, <laughs> I've seen, uh, I think it was your head of story. I can't remember, but I saw somebody say that on Instagram that this was the, or on Twitter, one of those, that, that this was the time of their life, the, the thing that they enjoyed making the most. Yeah. I think it was one of the animators, Nick Kondo. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And awesome. then he said in Spider-Verse was the worst film. Of the ever worst time, time of all time. <laughs> yeah. worst time. That was grueling. Die by the sword, yeah. die by the sword. <laughs> and it's true that, um, that we really loved coming to work on this picture. Every time we would, flop in to edit you know you knew you were going to laugh and enjoy yourself and one of the hardest things to do especially these days is to keep these movies from feeling synthetic mm. you know because they get um you know you live with a line for two years <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and it just it can get kind of machined down into mm -hmm. something that's a little stale and so you look for every opportunity to give it spontaneity. Those, those recording sessions, it's not, no one's in a booth. You know, the poor mm. um, producers are in the booth. You know, the rest of us are in the, we're in the, we're in, we're in the room with the actors. Yeah. And there's, you know, often five of us sitting there trying to be really quiet, but with the script and, you know, writing jokes down while and pitching stuff, just so mm -hmm. fun because you can like pitch a joke to Conan O'Brien, <laughs> which is, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like amazing. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, I'm not saying he'll say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he's a generous guy, but but like that, that writer's room feeling that you get, um, it, it you can kind of, it leeches onto the screen somehow. And, and I think that's what's so fun about working with Mike and his whole team and their whole philosophy is that that sense of spontaneity is pervasive. I, there's a, a couple times in the making of a movie and I've, I've been through this, I know you guys have too. And the recording sessions are one of those where it's a high, it can be a high stress time, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of money on the line, you know, every minute that's passing by, there's like a ticking clock. We only have this actor for so long. We're in the space that's costing us a tremendous amount of money. Um, everybody's time is valuable. And so there's that, that stress level. How do you guys, how do you guys deal with that um, when you're in the moment? <laughs> And that's just one example. I mean, it could be the orchestra yeah. too, because that's another place where it's like really expensive. Uh, we're on the orchestration yeah. stage and you know, composing. We, we we treat those um, recording sessions like Michael Bay treats a super techno crane. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't these know if I know that reference. Trees, right? <laughs> I think it, I think it means you don't care. You just you well, just we just have to. We have it, we, right? we don't care. Have to. We can't. You can't get. You know. You can't freeze with the, with the pressure of feeling like you need to get everything in one go, because you yeah. know you're not. You know you'll also get another bite at the apple later. Mm. Um, you know after you put it up and see, okay, this worked, this didn't. We need to change this line. We got to go back into the scene. You know you're going to come back there again. So you you have to sort of like take out like don't look at the nervous Nellies who are looking at their watches and and pointing at the clock and like going uh, yeah. and go like. Yeah. Let's get let's let's explore, especially in the early stages with an actor in the in those recording sessions. You're trying to find the character and trying to find the voice that they're going for and trying to find like the uniqueness of who this character is. Like it doesn't just come out immediately. You have to like mm. find it. No, I wish and this is we were I remember smart thinking... enough to know right away from the beginning and not <laughs> yeah, have to go on a journey to get there. But right, yeah. this is yeah. the whole reason we're here, right? Yeah. Is to capture. Yeah this magical person and their wild, unique brain. This mm -hmm. is why like Maya gets hired and makes money and has a nice house because <laughs> she is one of the only the people in the universe who can do this. Right. So we're gonna take a, a little time. Well, Phil's turning into Mike. He's getting excited here. <laughs> I get excited. Well, I Stop do. yelling. I, I, I get excited. This is what, this is, the, the whole apparatus of around the movie is here to capture these moments and create the conditions for creativity. I, and if we're I, not doing I, that, I that, we don't, right? Like Maya yeah. Rudolph is not Maya Rudolph because she's the most efficient actor <laughs> in the universe. <laughs> one so why I wonder. She's I'm, so, I'm so glad yeah. that you don't have the, 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 the nightmarish memories that I have of recording sessions where I literally remember a recording Eddie Murphy in his home on Mulan. And um, there was a production oh, coordinator that was like, um, so I just want to give you an update really quick here while he's turning the page that um, we are five lines behind. We have 27 lines left. There's no way oh, we're going to make it. Oh, no. <laughs> you really need to speed up. Oh, <laughs> I was like, tough. oh, I uh, did it. You know, you and, it. oh, my you gosh. It out. Uh, that good so my, news but you guys that, aren't that you're, you're not well, we've had uh, we also yeah we hired people that we knew were like available and around to play you know and down to down to down to play around we didn't you know we were hiring people because they were funny and you know in on their own and they were all content creators on their own mm -hmm. and uh and and i mean obviously eddie murphy's one of the funniest people ever to have lived on planet earth but uh, um but uh, but everybody knew what they were getting into. I'd say <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. thing. Yeah, well, we've Mike, talked a lot. Go ahead, yeah, Tom. let's. I want to hear Mike's take on this because it yeah. feels like you've been trying to like you. you that that was the the stress of those recording, uh, you know, times. Tell me, it, was there ever one that you went through the whole thing? And you're like, we can't use any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would I would definitely say I was the most stressed out person in the in the entire. You know, I tried to cover it with a joyous exterior, but my inside is crackling with fear, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, but You're I like I, gorging yourself on craft services yeah. in the corner, right? <laughs> well, I mean, Nervous I, eating. You, you try to put the fear behind you and let it power you instead of being in front of you and letting it freeze you, you know, like, yeah. I, and I think that one thing that was really cool uh, and that, that I did, really did learn in, in the process was to look at all of these situations as opportunities to make the movie better at all times. Yeah. Because it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a TV mentality to be like, we just got to get the lines. We just got to get the lines, man. You know, and, and it was really cool to have sort of Chris and Phil be able to like, whoa, dude, just calm down. I'm like, well, uh -huh. you know, they're like, just calm down. It's okay. You know, and sort of be like, it's okay if this recording session, all we do is like find the character. Like that's a huge win. You know, and, and, and in that way, that sort of philosophy like bled into all the other departments where instead of, you know, when I first started um, directing uh, the animation, I get, also had this like TV mentality where I was like, look, it just, just, just matched the boards, man. Right. And that was really freezing people up to not bring all of their awesome creativity into it. And like looking at every shot as an opportunity to 
every shot is an opportunity to create and make things better, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that's sort of like every step of the process from the mixing stage to the, you know, whatever, they are like these high stakes things where everyone's looking at you and, you know, time is money and whatever, but they're also opportunities to make the movie better. Oh, yeah. I remember I'm when the animation was kind of uptight. Yes. No, it's totally. for like three was months. Like, yeah. What's the matter? Yeah. Like I, I can't even remember what that stuff looked like. Cause it's not even it was not remotely me. like that, that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, because like you Alan, said the animation was or the animators? The animation, <laughs> like when we would look at shots, yeah. They were sort of I don't know, conservative or something. It was it, it was kind of like, yeah, you it was like spliny. And I think it was because like they were they were instead of coming from a place of invention, because they were coming of a place of fear, because I was like, uh just match the boards, guys. You know, mm. and and it was it was bad direction. And and sort of as soon as we like Alan Hawkins and his team, who is Alan is amazing, as soon as we were able to sort of give those guys permission to invent, all of a sudden the animation went from stiff and, you know, conservative to really expressive and fun and joyous, you know, and and it was it was really just like that difference of of uh, philosophy that did you it. You know, it's hard to, and what a great director you are to, to say that. You just blamed yourself for everything. But uh, <laughs> I mean, right. I can tell you. Well, to admit that too. I mean, it, no, that's, I mean, that's really tough to do. And I do applaud you just, yeah. yeah, good for you, man. But like there had to have been early on, and, and I just want to dig in. I know we have to get wrap this up pretty soon, but just at least a little bit about the animation part of it, which is, you know, finding that character, right? At the very beginning, how they move, right? Like, and yeah. especially at a really cartoony, at times, a very cartoony film like this, there's obviously some very sensitive parts too, which is awesome. By the way, I was sitting there, I was uh, standing in my office watching the last of it. I had to stop a couple of times, right? And, but yeah. I'm watching the last 10 minutes and I'm into it. And I'm literally finding myself uh, smiling. I, it's one of those times where I'm just like, I was by myself watching it. My kids and my wife don't like cartoons, um, but I'm watching it by myself, finishing this up. And, and it's all that oh, sensitive no. stuff. I know it is sad. I'm, so, I'm watching it and, uh, and it's the, between the dad and his daughter and that, and I have four girls. So I'm smiling out and I realize I'm like my mouth, I'm like really wide. Cause I'm just like- This, this is a big compliment for Tom and a real breakthrough. He doesn't <laughs> smile that often. I don't know if you know that. This is how I watch movies. Um, but it was a big deal because it hit me. You know, I wasn't crying, but I was smiling yeah, that's for babies. wide because I'm feeling like, I want to hear that from my daughter. Like what, I know how, <laughs> and I'm so into the characters that I'm just like, Rick really needs to hear this right now, you know? <laughs> and so I'm backing into a question that's kind yeah, of- Yeah, you're way off back, track right now. But I, I, wanted you, I wanted you to hear that story. Um, oh, thank you. But, but dang it, there must have been times, especially with Katie, where it's like, okay, she did, the animator did something nuts. Like, oh, mm -hmm. she went like all wild, you yeah. know, crazy armed or something like that. And you had to decide then and there wait, is that allowed? Are we doing that? Uh, were there times like that? And tell us about sort of finding that, what's the cor correct animation feel? Yeah, I think, I think in that, I sort of have this like general philosophy that like, basically, I, I, and this is maybe, I don't know, unique to me, but or something, but it's like, I feel like I always am trying to either pull from really like deep observation where, you know, a, a, you know, Katie is like pulling the, you know, you know, strings, strings in her sweatshirt because yeah. she's feeling nervous, and and really like I was like, look at, you know, I was I I would you know just insanely like video if I saw a little kid that looked like Aaron, I would like <laughs> you know do a video of him, and my wife's like, don't don't do that, yeah. uh, like, <laughs> uh, creepy. But, like creepy. Um, but 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 we were trying to sort of go for as observational as possible, and then on the robot stuff, I was like, that's when you guys can go bananas. Yeah. And they came up with this whole language and stuff. But like when when it was an emotional scene like that, like sort of Tom is describing it, it was sort of like, it was like, let's act it out, you know, shoot reference, think of, you know, your your little sister going to college or, you know, whatever analogy you can do for it and really like pull from those emotions and make it real. Because like those, the, in that time, you know, it's this, is, this isn't the time to be really cartoony and invent, invented. This is the time to like, really sit with those emotions and try to reflect them in the movie 
Um, and, and you'll have plenty of time to do wild stuff in the Furby chase or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Furby. Um, <laughs> oh, you brought it up, man. I was, I'd love the Furby chase. Furby. <laughs> but your creativity, it, you know, it could still be sort of wildly creative. It's just about looking and imagining the behaviors that yeah. happen in those moments. And I think it's very, um, very easy for stuff to get stock if mm. you don't, um, remind everyone that like our job is to look and witness and yeah. and that's what animation does so, so powerfully yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right it's to express a story through movement yeah that is so awesome you guys we should uh wrap this up right now but i i did want to ask uh one last thing of what's next uh for this cool gang of vagabonds gang of what are you guys up to next I'll be Besides sleeping. a little bit of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is Mike going to do? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to like, is there a sugar like involved? Knit, yeah. Knit a giant sweater or something. It's going <laughs> to be some weird obsessive thing. Do, do they start approaching you, Mike? They're like, oh, I smell hit. Okay. Let's get, let's get Mike and the project. I mean, do they, they, they I mean, they, yeah, we're yeah. sort of talking about some stuff and, and I'm, I'm, I am really excited. I think I'm sort of, one of the only people in animation who doesn't want to go into live action. I'm like, that sounds like Refreshing. That sounds rough. Um, it Cause I just love rough. cartoons and, and I really nice. love the, the, the sort of like the things, all the stuff that we learned on this movie and, and sort of in terms of like pushing, you know, the form and, 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 you know, telling a story in a different way. I'd love to like push that in sort of, you know, in new ways and, and adult stories and, you know, and, and, in, in all kinds of new ways, but I am going to take a long break first. I, I remember right talking on. to Mike awesome. during the mix and saying, what do you want to do next? You know, is there anything we can help with? He was like, I literally want to teach for a year. <laughs> and, what? And, and what Mike's not telling you is he has a really um, active part of his like art practice, which is mentoring and teaching other people. And it's mm. one of the things that makes him a great okay. person and a great filmmaker. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Tom and I are teachers too. And uh, we'd love to have you come speak at both of our colleges. Tom has one in Tennessee. I have one in California. Yeah, hey, pick, pick your best, the best place, which is national. Wherever you want to go. <laughs> All right. So Chris, my, my answer for you and Phil is, is that 2D animated film that you've been wanting to make, right? Is that oh man. Is there well, a 2D animated film? I will say, I, I will say there is, I mean, there is a, a, a 2D animated film that we produced uh, that's a, 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 a sort of a crazy low budget uh, movie that's coming yeah. out later this year on Netflix. Okay. Uh, America, the motion picture. It's just crazy. It was, and uh, it was done by the, uh, animated by the Archer folks. Oh. Um, and uh, and then we're also working on, on, on Spider-Verse 2, which has, a lot of 2D in it, I'll say. Really? It's, That's cool. There's a, a, there's a lot of different universes that are visited, and they each have their own signature yeah, film style. Yeah, that's and, awesome. Uh, and, you heard uh, it here first, folks. There you go. So there's uh, a lot of 2D coming down the pike. I'm excited, and I have a film too that you can. But you guys to. love you love animation. There's a there's there's a core there for you guys. No some question. Roots, some roots there. Good. Some roots, and and I think that as you guys are hinting, I think there's a lot of um, good work to be done. Mm. Still, you know, I think we're, we're, one of the things we've been able to do, and we've been given permission to go harder at, is just trying to make these movies all feel different. And I think as we keep developing more projects that's one of going to be our focus how does every movie have its own look and feel that's i feel awesome. like technology has finally caught up to people's imaginations and uh mm -hmm. and we've just scratched the surface of what films can look like and each animated film can look as different as every different artist painting uh, mm -hmm. so um i'm really proud of what mike and his team did on this movie and how distinctive and original it is. Uh, and I'm really excited for the future of animation because I think it's sort of just at the dawn of a new golden era. Wow. Well, you heard it here, guys. Check out it. The Mitchells versus The Machines on Netflix as of today, as we release this on April 30th. It's out today. Go check it out. Thank you, guys. 
Thank you for your Thank time. You. This has been so a, awesome. Thank it's you. It's been a real treat having all three of you on too and hearing all the perspectives and kind of merging yeah. it together. Thank you guys. And Mike's Likewise. energy. Mike's energy just took us home. That was awesome. That's right. I love it. You, a I passionate fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, as we always say, anime. Anime from the heart. From the heart. All right. And we're out. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. That was All fantastic. Right. I'm, I'm putting stop on my quick time. Yes, stop hey, your quick and time. Now, you is there be like somewhere... some sort of uh, Dropbox we can drop it off in? Absolutely. Um, uh, 